I saw right. <laughs> I seen a picture today on Reddit. Mm. There's a baby cow. It's born, got no head, just all eyes. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Can you imagine that? All two eyes. No, no, no. Like, imagine its head was like frog spawn, but made of eyes. Like the frog in The Simpsons. Exactly like that. There's uh, no smoking in this building, Miss Trammell. What are you gonna do? Charge me with smoking? Would you tell us the nature of your relationship with Mr. Boz? I had sex with him for about a year and a half. I liked having sex with him. He wasn't afraid of experimenting. I like men like that. Men who give me pleasure. He gave me a lot of pleasure. You ever uh, engage in any sadomasochistic activity? Exactly what did you have in mind, Mr. Corelli? You ever tie him up? No. You never tied him up. No. Johnny liked to use his hands too much. I like hands and fingers. You describe a uh, white silk scarf in your book. I've always had a fondness for white silk scarves. They're good for all occasions. But you said you like men to use their hands, didn't you? No, I said I like Johnny to use his hands. I don't make any rules, Nick. I go with the flow. Did you kill Mr. Boz, Mr. Trammell? I'd have to be pretty stupid to write a book about killing and then kill somebody the way I described it in my book. I'd be announcing myself as the killer. I'm not stupid. We know you're not stupid, Mr. Trammell. Maybe that's what you're counting on to get you off the hook. Writing the book gives you an alibi. Yes, it does, doesn't it? The answer is no. I didn't kill him. Do you use drugs, Mr. Trammell? Sometimes. You ever use drugs with Mr. Boz? Sure. What kind of drugs? Cocaine. Have you ever fucked on cocaine, Nick? Well, hello and welcome to GOATS, the greatest podcast ever as we've previously established this week joined for the second time a two-time guest the greatest guest we've ever had amy how are you doing amy i'm very good thank you i'm very excited and a bit less scared this time that's good because you realize that we're just all making up as we go along Exactly. exactly. (laughs) we really um we really let the facade go this time and it was just like about an hour before we sent you some WhatsApp stuff and we're like, oh, we'll just fucking crack on, won't we? Be all right. Um, so, as the listeners are probably aware of now, when Amy comes on the show, we know things are going to get outrageous. We know things <laughs> are going to get just off the chain, too fucking hot for TV. And this week is no different because this week is the patent pending sexy grab bag with amy if we can think of a catchier title we'll workshop it but that's what we're doing so this week we are going to discuss the goat sex scene the goat sex toy and the goat sexual fetish now we haven't actually established which one we're doing first but should we do fetish because i've introduced us sure happy days amy are you still there your screen's frozen We'll take that as a note. <laughs> this has started. <laughs> oh, are you still there? there? She is. Oh, we can hear her. There we go. Hello. Yes. Back. Yes, yes, Amy's back. Talked, yes. Right. If you lag out, we'll um, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just deal with it. We'll just deal with it. It's fine. 
This is what we Sorted do. Sort it out. It's your job, Sam. Okay. It's fine. It's not like this is my full time job or anything, and I should be much better than, better <laughs> at it than I am. Okay, so we're going to start off with fetishes. What is a fetish? A fetish is a form of sexual desire in which gratification is strongly linked to a particular object or activity or a part of the body other than the sexual organs. Now, fetishes come in all shapes and sizes. We all know that. We could be talking anything from a foot fetish to something I found today, which is called lithophilia, which is an arousal to stones or gravel. Mm. Nice. And I just think, before we start, (laughs) I think it's important to say that fetishes are just a great measuring stick for how diverse of a world we are. Isn't it great Mm. that there's there's someone out there who can just see a bit of gravel and have a wank? I think that's yeah. great. There's nothing wrong with that. That's brilliant. What do you think the uh, What do you think the sexiest igneous rock is? <laughs> it's got to be something porous, doesn't it? I don't it's mean to get. I, did, I know we're going off the rails immediately, but if you had to pick a sexy rock, this sounds awful. Maybe this is such a male perspective, though, because I'm about to say you need one with a lot of holes in it. But no. maybe. People Maybe. don't like those, do they? They have that hole thing where they're like... Trypophobia. Oh, light holes and that, yeah. Trypophobia, up, yeah. That made-up thing But then Facebook. maybe maybe that's looking at it from the male gaze. Maybe a, like a, yeah. a girl would prefer something smoother. <laughs> well, yeah. I did think of slate, and slate. I don't know why, but I was like... Slate. 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 It's a bit sharp. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. I don't know. I, Sorry. Is it I'm immediately... I'm immediately kink shaming your slate around. Yeah. That's not good. Right? <laughs> yeah. This is supposed to be an inclusive environment. I'm like, fucking slate. Oh my God. That's disgusting. If it's not porous, that's just weird. Um, no, but, you know, th- there's, something to, there's something to hold on to in some way. Anyway, now that we've established what a fetish is, we just need to establish which the greatest of all time is, which seems like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Who would like to go first? Um, I don't mind going first. Right, because I realise that I... In the last episode, I didn't really talk about anything sexual. So this might be a little uh, in, little insight for the listeners into my, how my mind works. This is going to be a terrifying eye-opener, to say the <laughs> least. Let's, uh, well, let's prepare ourselves. Also, before we kick off this week... I don't know if Amy, this wasn't the case. We're, before you last joined, we hadn't mm. we hadn't had the horrendous football episode, which then led <laughs> us to getting the timer, which we now have. So we now have <laughs> roughly a specific time frame. It's not no one's gonna p- stop you midway through, but it's just mm. like don't take the piss. Yeah, now normally like me and with football. <laughs> yeah, that was I, <laughs> I did practice today, so did honest, you? and I timed it. Really? I did it all proper, yeah. Nice. Wow. That's more That's than I don't time mine. I just go, that nah, will be all right. <laughs> yeah. So fair play. Because, <laughs> so yeah, this week, <laughs> normally good. we have 15 minutes. This week, because we're doing this as a, a foursome, right? <laughs> Look, we're already, already, little, little bit of a joke there for you. Um, <laughs> but no, this week, because there's four of us, we're doing just five minutes to get yeah. our point across, which is intense. You got to be to the point. So, yep. Michael, when you're yep. ready, your five minutes will start. Are you ready? Yeah. I said, "Are you ready?" And then I wasn't ready. Three, two, one, go. So, um, this pick it was interesting when I was trying to Google it, to say the least. Now, when googling most common fetishes. I was faced with faced with a list that included things like piercings, hair, shoes, and leather, which I actually thought I thought that was quite tame. Um, I was expecting much more things to do with farts, but no, <laughs> alas, nothing. Maybe that says um, more about you. Yeah, well, but on another list, there was something else that caught my attention, and that which I hadn't actually thought about was role play. Now, role play is something that has actually always intrigued me. Um, I've never done it, and I've never been asked to do it. Uh, I did do some acting in school, and I did do some Shakespeare at the theatre. So, did you acting? Yeah. 
What yeah, a I did the did. situation. Yeah, I performed. Um, I performed as the best ever puck, apparently, according to my drama teacher, at the Shakespeare Schools Festival at Phoenix Theatre. I am quite the actor, I'll have you know. Wow. So it's something I'm very comfortable with. I'm actually quite comfortable doing that and pretending and playing a role. Um, however, however, I do not think for a chance that I could walk into the bedroom and tell my missus, Ooh, a plumber's here. I've heard there's a leaky tap that needs fixing without bursting out laughing. Like, I genuinely don't think I could do it. And I even... I even more, 100,000% could not walk in as a celebrity and put on a squeaky, high-pitched voice and tell her all about that time I whipped in a free kick against Greece to send England to the World Cup and maintain an erection. <laughs> That's what she'd be walking in as. I don't think she'd be into David Beckham. You'd be into it, though. <laughs> Do you think... What do you think would happen if you said to your partner, you know, I really, really yeah. want to do do role play? And she was like, uh, okay, you know, we'll give it a go. And then you said, like, could you be Jurgen Klopp? If <laughs> I, I, if I said that to her, you mean? Yeah, do you think she'd go along with it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> she'd be like, no, uh, What if you bye. just said, look, I've got these glasses. <laughs> yeah, I've got these fake teeth as well. Can you can you practice some German for me? I've got this mediocre no, she Premier definitely, League team. Yeah, she definitely wouldn't do it. Um, and I definitely, I would 100% lose the erection if I said that. I'd always fancied her over Posh Spice anyway. So role play is not something that I could do, but I admire it. I think it's incredible. Like, fair play to all those people because I wouldn't do it not because I don't think it would be fun. I do it. I couldn't do it because I would just laugh hysterically. I think it would just be like too funny. I, I couldn't take it seriously. I'd have to take it as a joke. So that interested me as well. But I didn't actually pick that as the goat. I wanted to for a minute, but my mind just kept going back to something which is just clearly is clearly the goat. Um, and it's really obvious. It wasn't actually even on that many lists. However. It's got to be feet, isn't it? It's just got to be feet. Like, everybody is obsessed with feet. And I can't tell you how many times over the last two years I have heard people say, Oh, I'm just going to start an OnlyFans and sell pictures of my feet and become a millionaire. Obviously, that's not how it works. Not everybody wants to see pictures of your random feet. It's very specific. People like all kinds of feet. They like nice clean lovely feet they like grotty long toenails feet <laughs> they like polished nails they like smelly feet you can buy people's used socks on the internet they you can also watch videos of people crushing cake and various other fruits probably with their feet it's something that everybody loves and i'm sure that every celebrity every person in the world like it's any kind of sexual influencer has been asked can i have some pictures of your feet amy have you ever been asked can i have some pictures of your feet she's nodding yes we all knew that question my point. was coming it was it was just inevitable <laughs> you're like everyone's been asked and we all thought yeah wonder where this is gonna go well that's just <laughs> another bullet in my chamber now personally i absolutely hate feet I can't stress my hate for feet enough. You do. Not necessarily other people's feet. They actually don't really bother me that much, particularly my own feet. I don't like touching them myself. I even more don't like other people touching them. And don't get me fucking started on my weird sock routine, okay? <laughs> we won't. <laughs> because I'm very particular about feet, which is why I find the foot fetish thing so interesting, because millions of people love feet across the world it's got to be the mo one of the most common it's the one i just think of straight away is foot fetish it's almost like those two words are intertwined and i would absolutely love to meet somebody with a thing for feet and ask them like what it's all about what makes it great because i i'm just really interested how something that can it really repulses me make massive pleasure for somebody else i think that's super interesting um and Feet's just the goat. Straight up, 
feet as the goat. Wow, that is, I was not expecting that because I know of your repugnance towards feet. Mm. So the fact mm. that you would pick that is genuinely quite shocking. Yeah, well, that's the thing is everybody <laughs> loves it. And I'm like, do they? Well, Why? I don't get it, but it's got to be a thing. Yeah. Now, I here's... don't know a single person who said they enjoyed feet ever. I, I do know someone. <laughs> I feel like saying that makes it sound like it's me. It's not me. <laughs> But I wouldn't be embarrassed if it was me. It's I'm just fine if it's, it's you. No, I literally I don't think not it's care embarrassing. If it was you. We're in a difficult don't situation now where lines. it's like the more I say it's not me, the more it feels like it's me. But it genuinely it's fine, mate. isn't me. You can say it's you. It's fine. But it's we not all, me. We all know it's you. But if it was me, it would be fine. But here's the thing. It would be fine. Obviously, I, being the uh, professional podcaster and host that I am, forgot to introduce to the audience that Amy has only fans, and that is why. We immediately all looked at Amy and went, oh, I wonder how Amy's experience has been with this. Now, sorry to just berate you with questions immediately, but here's my one intriguing question with the foot thing. If someone asks to see a picture of your feet, do they want feet plus general sexiness or do they just want feet? Like, is it like I want feet and tit, which seems difficult, <laughs> that's that's an angle that's a difficult to pull up, isn't it? That pull up, there's a timer involved there minimum <laughs> or is, most, it, is it just feet most of the time it's just feet that's um, interesting but it does vary people want weird stuff people do ask for can i see your ass whilst looking at your tits and your pussy and i'm like this that's not going to happen is it i can't <laughs> you into a pretzel and just uh... <laughs> you're like setting up mirrors it's like a whole thing <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. <laughs> i just love the idea that someone asks you that and you're like oh, for fuck's sake you're like sat down with a drawing board like okay so there's a mirror here and if i set the timer here and i spin at the right moment maybe i could get but I'm still not going to get the tits in. Oh, this can't. This is never going to work. <laughs> it's just, just, <laughs> every job has challenges. Mm. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting, Michael. And genuinely a shock to me. But I do think you're right in the sense that feet are one of those bits of the body that I think to most people, obviously, if you don't feel this way, totally cool. But for most people, aren't inherently sexy. Mm. Like when you talk about eyes, you're like, oh, well, eye contact is kind of sexy. Faces and inherently convey like emotion. So there's like a romantic sexual chemistry there. Even hands and like abs and tits and bums, they're yeah. all sexy. Dicks, dicks can be sexy. <laughs> but feet. <laughs> It's, it's difficult to well, imagine, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But when I was reading up about it, it did talk about that. It said that some things, like, especially with feet, it might come from the, the fact that they're, like, mundane and they're, like, a bit taboo because they're always covered up. Everyone's always got shoes and socks on, like, for the most part. And it, they're a bit boring. And so, for some people, that's something a bit exciting. Do you know what I mean? It's a little bit like, ooh, you shouldn't really have your feet out. So that makes it a bit... Like yeah. mysterious, therefore start starting to get into the, like the sexy realm. Yeah, if, if your brain's like that, so that yeah, that's where I would think it comes from. But again, I'd love to meet somebody who's like obsessed with feet and just be like, yeah, what's 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 the all about, basically. I would be super interested by that because mm. I'm also again just interested. Is it like I don't know? It's difficult to to imagine getting off to a foot. Well, that's what fetishes are, aren't they? They're just um, exactly. more often than not, they're very like niche, and they don't have like a an obvious reason why someone would find them sexy. I think, mm. I think my friend said that he reckons foot fetishes are about because it's like a sort of a primal thing. Because seeing someone's feet is like it's quite um, revealing, like in the wild, for example. And he reckons mm. that basically every fetish, like ever, is because it's kind of like a, a revealing thing um, that, like, y you'd be in danger if you're, like, you know, taking a shit in the wild, for example. That's why people <laughs> think shit... Some people think shit's sexy, right. you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, guess I was just going to say, how does taking a shit come into that? <laughs> but I also guess, like, in a way, I can understand it 
purely in the sense of seeing someone's seeing someone with no shirt on for instance guy or girl there's nothing inherently going on there that is like sexual and yet people are sexually aroused by it it comes back like even tits tits aren't actually for sex and yet they are like Mm. a sexy thing and people get excited i mean like amy for instance genuinely like you're have an income stream from people being like i want to see your tits and that that's mm. exciting to me. So in yeah. that sense, like you don't get to see everyone's feet. Feet aren't like a day to day occurrence. So it is, I guess, like a revealing thing. It's like being like, mm. have a look at this thing which you wouldn't normally get to see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have a foot fetish. I don't. Does it? I don't know if this counts. But like, I love people sucking my toes. Yeah, I yeah. suppose maybe that mm. does count, but I personally don't have the foot fetish. But having like feet, are, they're just there's so many nerve endings in there. Yeah, like there's yeah. something so yummy and tickly about it. See, do you know yeah. what the thing is? I, love it. I don't have the confidence to let someone suck my toes. Yeah, it's not that I wouldn't think I would like it. It's just I don't have the foot confidence in my head. I'm like my feet are a bit Gross. rank, mm. and they're not. They're very yeah. clean. I clean them every day. Well. Lucy but loves I, I you. She loves you more than anyone in the world, world. It just so happens. So I'm sure she'd be. I'm sure she'd oblige. It gives. Oh, it yeah. makes me embar- yeah. It makes me feel like I feel hot just thinking about it. <laughs> but not. I in couldn't a sexy do that. Way. But for the reason of the, all the nerve endings, I hate being tickled. I hate the feeling of like ticklish. Yeah. Would you so suck someone else's feet, opposite. Michael? Um. No, I don't think so. Well, I think I could. <sighs> It's the point, isn't it? If you're doing something to someone else, like if your partner who you love, like, it's like, oh, can you do this? It's for me. It's not for you. You're kind of like, oh, like you think about it a lot more, don't you? Like, oh, I guess so. Yeah. Mm. God, Christ, we need to crack on because we've spent <laughs> like 25 minutes talking about that, and we've haven't even got through fucking Michael's yet. So, thank you, Michael, Feet, for that. Done. Feet done. Who's going next? Uh, I want to go last. If I... that's okay. Perfect. Lovely, lovely. I'd like to go next because you've set me up so well. Um, okay, so I had a lot of different ideas and I also did a shitload of research because there is so many kinks. And I came up with like top three. I also found some weird ones. One of the wholesome and cute ones that I found. Um, and I kind of like the sound of it, no pun intended, is <laughs> Mellow Lagnia. Oh. Which is a fetish involving being turned on by music. And I think oh. that's kind of wholesome. Hmm. And then a bit weirder wholesome. with... It is. It's lovely. A bit weirder is nebulophilia, which is being aroused by fog, steam, dry ice, or smoke. Okay. Weird. I can see that. It's mysterious. <laughs> I thought, like... <laughs> I thought, like, maybe... There would be like a growth of this with vaping, and people would have like weird vaping kinks. That's mm. true. Yeah. Oh yeah, they do. Have you seen vape weddings? Sorry, if you haven't seen vape weddings, just Google it now. They're For fucking fuck hilarious. <laughs> just they're oh, so that's funny. Oh, that's all I need to say. Just Google vape wedding photography. It's fucking great. Oh, Carry on, Amy. That is bad. That is bad. <laughs> so <laughs> funny. Um, <laughs> and then the third weird one was stygio stygiophilia which is the fetish of the idea of going to hell or facing eternal punishment Mm. i just thought they were little interesting ones right yeah so third place um and i did think about feet i thought that was a good one it's a classic it's like what you think of when you think of fetishes Mm. Uh, but it just was not hitting hard enough you know um so third place which is one of my favorites is a kink that I think like lots of people engage in, but they don't really realize that it's a kink. And I think it comes from like our deepest desire to be good and to please people and to be accepted and loved. Um, I just think it's sweet and very vulnerable kink. And that is the praise kink. I think what better feeling is there than being called like a mm. good girl or a good boy or being like, you're, you're doing such a great job. It's so motivating and, like, <laughs> nurturing. Yeah. Um, but it just wasn't quite enough. So that's third. Second is something that I've got, like, mixed feelings with. Um, 
especially more recently, but it's like an interesting trend that's happening in this stage of capitalism where there's like such a divide of classes and we're seeing like lots of rich people do this to like poor people, which is kind of strange. Um, this kink helped me through so many times, got me through uni. This kink is financial domination. Um, I haven't even particularly had to like dominate many people doing this. I usually, it's just like men who will send me money and get off on it or like buy stuff from my Amazon, Amazon wish list, which the link is in my Instagram. Um, and- <laughs> <laughs> get on that. So that was like a win-win for me. I was like, that's good. Mm. I think it's like interesting how like pay pigs give their money to like sex workers. And it's kind of like the sexiest form of redistributing wealth and like a very communist mm, that's true. Thing. So that's number two. But number three, and this is like the best and greatest king of all time, is one that needs no money or products. All it takes is human beings doing what human beings do best, playing. From the dawn of time, humans that have this strong need to play before like video games and Monopoly, um, but this form of play could never be replaced by material gains. Nowadays, in a world where adult forms of play are limited due to social norms, we've had, we found ourselves resorting to games like tempin bowling, board games, sports, and other competitive games. And aside from games, we spend our time working 60-hour weeks, and we're always in need of letting go and letting, getting an escape from our role in society. So we've become our jobs, we've become our labels, except in the bedroom. The bedroom seems to be the only place aside from like stages where adults are allowed to become fully immersed in play without the aim of winning. From naughty nurses, pervy plumbers and horny housewives, <laughs> the bedroom is its own stage where actors can undress <laughs> from their real life societal worlds and become anyone they choose to be. So I believe that role play, the greatest kink of all time, is essential to society, in, especially in a society where we've like squashed our adult self-expression and gotten like out of touch with our inner child. So I think in this society, bedroom is a much needed haven for play and thus role play is a form of escapist therapy. Ooh. Wow, I love that. Nice. That was very well articulated. That was solid <laughs> and a you. very good point. Cause yeah, it might I'm just be... going to go and order like a Mario costume now and just come upstairs <laughs> one day. Just go, <laughs> it's a me! And just see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I know I mean. she'll leave me, but it might be worth it. <laughs> but the thing is, I think you're right in the sense of it's definitely not the most extreme but is it the most worthwhile? Is it the one that we need the most? Is it like... Because I do think, and I think you're right, there is something like... You feel inherently tied down to like being you. Like you have to be you all day. You can't just one day be like, I just want to be a plumber now. Or I just... W-. That's a bad example. But you can't... Like, especially I feel like the the thing as well is like role playing gives people confidence. And, like, it's very difficult to decide one day, like, you can't just go to work and be like, I'm going to be cool now. And everyone's going to think I'm cool. And everyone's mm. going to think I'm sexy. And everyone's going to think I'm someone to to envy or to find attractive. But in the bedroom, you could just be like, yeah, I'm going to be a sexy fighter pilot. That's who I am today. And, like, yeah. I, I actually do see that as more than just, like, a a sexual thing but the ability to like just be whoever you want to be is like super important mm. and obviously it goes more than that you can be who you ever want to be and like i've given some very mundane examples of like fighter pilots <laughs> or whatever but like to to be who you truly feel you are and to like role play as someone else is quite exciting that's a yeah. really it's good like, answer it's like an escape as well isn't it because if you've like been with someone for a long time and you're like oh uh, or you've only ever been with one person you're like oh wouldn't it be so cool if like oh, I, go- I would get to like do this with like a nurse or something is so common isn't it like you can't at really it's like a desire and it's not harming anybody but it is exciting and then if you can go into that realm with the person that you're with like yeah that is 
that is like a really good escape and a good a cool thing so but, uh, yeah without meaning to go too off topic because we do need to we do need to crack on I do have a question specifically for Vinny because this is something with role oh play that specifically affects me and Vinny is also in a similar situation. So, <laughs> Vinny, your mum is a teacher. Oh, is no. a teacher. Don't bring my mum no, into this. No, 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 no. Okay. Your mum's a teacher. Yeah. My mum is a nurse. And I find when people start talking about sexy nurses, I get like, no, no. No, thank you. I don't want anything to do with that. Get that mm. the fuck away from me. <clears throat> Would you be equally repulsed if someone was like, I'm going to be a sexy teacher? Or would you be able to separate your connection from that? Well, I think teacher, I my mum is definitely not the first thing that comes to my mind. Not even the fifth or sixth thing that comes to mind especially mm. if it's like in the bedroom my mum is definitely not in my mind yeah. i'm just gonna get that out there and clear. <laughs> so i personally don't have a problem with it i don't really care oh what Seb's saying is if lucy ever walked in wearing a nurse's costume he'd scream no mum and run out is what he's, <laughs> is what no. he's just said <laughs> yeah. Mommy, no. like run prince harry all over again um no anyway well that was very insightful amy thank you and that okay. leaves us with only one more person. And we know it's nothing to do with mums, so that's good news. <laughs> but, Vinny, <laughs> but Vinny, what do you believe is the greatest fetish of all time? So first of all, I'm just going to say, I think to kind of put any fetish over any other fetish, I think is kind of bizarre. Like, I think they're all... Other than obviously the illegal and the moral things like necrophilia, for example, they're they're all they're all equal. I think yeah. you, know, you shouldn't kink shame, you know, unless it's necrophilia, then you probably should kink shame. Don't um, start taking the moral high ground here. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> what we inherently do is pick things that we shouldn't be making objective <laughs> answers about, and then we do that. But we can't. We can't. But, that just breaks do, the whole fabric of the show. But there is one thing. There was. Uh, there's one fetish. I mm. think stands leagues above the rest. There you go. Here and that is uh, that is so. My entire script for this section is uh, three words. So uh, I've just <laughs> wow. got here written down: love and affection. Smiley face. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> what? What? No, right, no. No, 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 You, when I said that love was the greatest drug, you fucking slated. Me. It's not a drug though. It's a chemical reaction yeah. in, your, in your body, but it's still a fetish. Yeah, Sam, I have to side with Vinny here. He, at least, love is is in this. Yeah, people have been getting off to loving other people. Oh, that's literally why humans are here, I suppose. Honestly. Without wanting Vinny exactly. to. Win. Because I do want feet to it's win. It's always like this with you two. Oh, we've known each other since we were nine. No. I don't care. <laughs> Stop fucking backing up all the time. Well, he's right. <laughs> I am right. I was right. Anyway, Vinny, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I just think when you're getting down and dirty with uh, a man or woman of your choice or a them slash they or any creature. A person. Any person yeah not creature <laughs> <laughs> not creature person <laughs> um, <laughs> um i just think the most important thing well not the most important thing but i think there's there's, there's nothing better than when there's love involved when there's affection when you really mm. have that deep connection between the two of you you know and i just think as you know i haven't actually experienced this but i imagine it's very nice <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Vinny, I love oh, you. Vinny. That was the greatest. The that's thing. the greatest moment you've ever had. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my answer. I didn't really have anything written down just because I think it speaks for itself, really. No, mm. Vinny, I think that's a brilliant answer. I do think you're right, but only because I think I was previously right when I said that love was a drug. I think love <laughs> is also a fetish. Um, yeah, but what about people who hate each other and do it? Yeah, but is that on. I. I do they? What you, what you mean is, do they really? Jet, do they? Is it like a, they secretly love each other? Like a love hate. Or about like angry things. Seb, you're always talking about having angry wanks. You do. So you need, should we, know we about do, this. We don't need to bring that up. <laughs> also, I don't know if angry wanks are the healthiest thing, and I definitely don't know if angry sex. 
I don't want to, again, not shaming anyone. But it's there. It's there, but it's yeah. definitely different from the love thing. It's a different mm. end of the spectrum. Mm. I think first and foremost, we need to narrow this down to one, to two. Unfortunately, Michael, you picked a great answer, but you went quite... You went quite small picture with it. <laughs> Vinny went big. Amy went big. Amy started talking about how it was like important to the fabric of our like society. You just went feet because it's weird. <laughs> I didn't say weird. I just said feet because it's like it's just got to be in it. <laughs> exactly. That's and, 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 you know, I agree with you that when you think of fetishes, you the, mm. the foot fetish thing is probably the one that baffles people the most. But yeah. I just I just don't think it's in the conversation for goat. Fair enough. Fair enough. Seb's you know thinking what? long and hard about this. And veiny. <laughs> I had to get that. <laughs> long and thick and hard. Um, no. I think... Do you know what? I have thought long and hard and thick and veiny about it. And do you know what? I think Vinny's answer was brilliant. But just... I think it was neck and neck. But purely on the basis of the con- the 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 well-rounded argument put forward and how well rehearsed it was round 1 greatest fetish has to go to role play has to go to amy winner winner chicken dinner and also michael bought it up in his own one yeah like michael was like role play is pretty good and then fucking amy was mm. like boop fucking yeah. knocked out yeah. of so i think that has to be it do i get the assist all right, you can get the assist. Yes. <laughs> um, right. Well, with that in mind, on to the next thing, which I believe is... Are we going to do sex toy? Because then Amy's in the middle. Yeah. 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 Amy's, you are? We Perfect. Okay. So <clears throat> our next little sexy treat for you, probably... You first found this in your parents' bedside drawers and thought, what the fuck is that? They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and speed, powers and colors and textures. I personally have at least 11 different ones under my bed. I had a look earlier, counted them, including... That's a high number. I know, quite impressive. I have zero. (laughs) Do you actually? (laughs) Boring. Yeah, I I don't have any. Oh. Aw, sad. (laughs) (laughs) including a silicone pink and yellow banana five different butt plugs and a 30 centimeter vibrator that is so powerful it could literally shake your teeth out (laughs) some of the stranger some of the stranger types of these include pussy pumps electro stimulation toys and giant tentacle dildos You've probably guessed it already. Our next round, we will be crowning the greatest sex toy of all time. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Right, I'll go first. Why not? So, sex toy was a bit of a difficult one for me because I'm not going to sit here and say I don't know anything about sex toys because that wouldn't be true. Um, (laughs) In fact, there was a bit of an awkward moment which I've never discussed on the podcast before, but Thea, friend of the show, Thea, who I train at jiu-jitsu with, helped me and my partner move. And me and Thea were carrying me and Lucy's bedroom drawers up the stairs and the bottom drawer slid open and <coughs> revealed in all its glory the bottom drawer. Um, so, mm. you know, I'm not I'm not a stranger to the idea, unlike Michael, who's a fucking dweeb. Um, I'm not a strange that idea. I thought she was talking about dildos, and I was saying I personally don't have any that I've, I use on the, myself. Okay, okay. Anyway, however, on that note, what I would say is the majority of sex toys, when you Google sex toys, are aimed at women. And when you think about sex toys, I think your head goes towards yeah. f- female-aimed pleasure toy things and so it was difficult for me to say oh this is super culturally significant when it's not been designed specifically for me and obviously there is stuff out there and you know you can find stuff that's more male you know centric everyone's got at least one hole things can go in let's be real but most things are aimed at women (laughs) what 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 does that mean (laughs) 
<laughs> like, if something's designed to go up a hole, everyone's got a hole that it could go up. <laughs> well, I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't like, get it. Is this a like, like logic puzzle? No, 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 no. I'm <laughs> Which just mean everyone's like, got can, a hole or something? You can say, like, dildos are aimed at women, but everyone's oh, got right. a hole a dildo can go up. Oh, I see. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, like, fair enough. It might be female... Orientated. Like, but orientated or marketed, yeah. but they could also go up a bummer, you know? Everyone's mm. got one. Um, yeah, however, I had a bit of a think, and I remembered a sort of nostalgic, a nostalgic sex toy memory, um, which involved the radio. Now, I don't know if any of you have heard of the Howard's, the Howard Stern show. Yeah. So Howard Stern's like an American DJ no. slash kind of celebrity media personality Radio guy. host. Radio host. Um, he was on their version of like, he was on America's Got Talent as one of the judges. I'm not 100% on how I feel about Howard Stern. He has a slightly sleazy energy, which I'm not sure I'm like fully behind. He's a massive cunt. I fucking hate him. He seems like a massive cunt. <laughs> he's entertaining, but he's a massive cunt. Yeah. Fair and he play. says there stuff on like, if you listen to the show, like he says <clears> stuff <throat> on it that like, it... sorry. Ed? Hello, <laughs> she's back. I didn't think. Oh, gone then. Seb, carry on. <laughs> sorry. Um, yes. So Howard Stern, bit of a weirdo, <laughs> but he is iconic for having this show that is like it's called the howard stern show it's going been going on since like the 80s and the whole point in this radio show is it's like outrageous it's a digital radio show now and even since like the 80s they've been talking about like sex and drugs and all that stuff that's like super taboo they've always had like porn stars on the show and all this stuff that's like not radio safe in the traditional sense and in 2006, very famously, the Howard Stern Show was gifted a sex toy called the Sibian. Now, this thing is old school. It's none of this pink and purple, happy, clappy, modern shit. This thing looks like it was made in a factory. It's like engineering style sex toy. Old school, slightly scary. If you turn this thing up to max, it might induce kind of sex toy. It's a black saddle with like a dildo that gets sort of stretched onto the top. Mm. And I know what you're thinking. That's not very impressive. It's just a saddle, saddle with a dildo on it. Well, just like with people, it's, what, it's, what's, it's what's on the inside that counts. Because this thing has not one, but two electric motors. Now, the first electric motor spins the dildo or whatever attachment you decide to have on top in a kind of rotational like the queen waving motion god rest her soul like the queen rest <laughs> queen waving in your <laughs> vagina kind of motion now that motor can spin up to 120 rpm that's pretty fast right that's mm. not you know inside a fanny that's that's going some mm. however it's the vibrator that takes things to another level. The vibrator motor in this has 0.5 of a horsepower. 0.5. That's insane. And it can vibrate the attachments up to six and a half thousand RPM. Jeez. That revs higher than my actual car. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is that? <laughs> Six and a half thousand RPM. And when you hear one of these going off, it sounds like a plane taking off. <laughs> like, I urge you to listen to the audio. I might even insert some, or Michael can insert some, with non-sexual overtones. Sexual just noises. Just the pure... It, I can't the even... Buzz. Be, it's like It's not a buzz, it's like a roar. <laughs> it is, it's like it's re-entering the atmosphere. Now... <laughs> With that, and the fact that you can change the attachments so it can kind of go in anywhere and rub on anything, the kind of tagline of this thing, the kind of vibe of it, is like, it will get you there. Guaranteed. And not only will it get you there, but it will get you there 
fucking quickly, the same like style. uncontrollably quickly. <laughs> now, obviously, this is such a again the male gaze. I'm not thinking about like, oh, this is the most pleasurable. I'm like, you sit on this fucking chair and you'll be there in a minute. Mm. But that is the vibe with this thing. Now, the whole point of the bit on the Howard Stern show when they got this thing was they would get guests in, like porn stars, minor celebrities. They'd be like, sit on this thing. You're guaranteed to orgasm. And then they'd be like, nah, I don't think I will. Like, I don't, not like now nah, I don't want to sit on it. Like, oh yeah, I'll sit on it, but you won't make me orgasm. And then they'd sit on it and they'd crank it up to like 40% and it would be <laughs> orgasm within like a minute. Like, like literally, there's people, I mean, I don't know if it's fake, but it looks like, you know, one of those like American pastors who like touch someone's head and their legs start shaking. And they're, like, on <laughs> yeah, the floor. yeah. It's like that. There's people like literally floored by this thing. They can't get up. They can't walk. It's ridiculous. It's off the chain. Wow. And just to finish off, I know what you're thinking. If it's such a big deal, why haven't I heard of it? Well, first and foremost, it is quite a big deal. It was on a radio show, so that's something. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the inventor, Dave Lampert, actually won a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Adult Adult Video Industry Awards for his dedication and service (laughs) through the Sibian. Mm. The other reason you probably haven't heard of it is it is quite expensive. How expensive? Right. It's a grand and a half. <laughs> Fucking oh hell. <laughs> and that is before you buy the £100 optional splash guard. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> splash guard. <laughs> Which is on the website. It's a grand and a half. No, that's too much money. You this thing's like, like just. Yeah. You buy like three you, Lego you... sets of that. <laughs> yeah. And all of those could go up your vagina. Yeah. It's also not the sort of thing that I think you whack out on a romantic evening. I think it's pretty yeah. advanced level stuff. <laughs> it's like you wouldn't be like, "Hey babe, I I bought something a bit cheeky off the internet for you to try. Sit like, on maybe it. we should get this out on the la- later." <laughs> and then you fucking wheel this thing out, plug it into the mains, screw it to the floor, and you're like, "This thing goes up to six and a half thousand RPM." Yeah. However, I think purely from an engineering standpoint. <laughs> And from a cultural standpoint, it's the GOAT. It was on a fucking radio show, and it was like, sit on this thing, you won't fucking walk again. Mm. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Imagine if the Scott Mills show, you just listened to this morning, and he was like, yeah, sit on this thing, love, and you'll never fucking walk <laughs> again. That's stupid. It doesn't anyway. sound very fun, though. Like you said, I don't think it would be the kind of thing like, oh, hey, babe, I just bought this thing. It sounds like, I don't know. It sounds terrifying. It- but I think it sounds like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like it's like I'm hooked. I want it. This is the thing though. Is also all the people I saw using it said it was fucking incredible. No mm. one was like I didn't enjoy that. They mm, were just true. like, what the fuck. But I think <laughs> part of it is is that it doesn't like. It's a bit of a scattergun approach in the sense of like obviously everyone's insidey bits get stimulated by slightly different places but because this thing's so powerful it vibrates from like your knees to your tits so it's gonna hit the spot like i genuinely think that's like like if you read the wikipedia it basically vibrates from like the top of your crotch right round to your back it's just like fucking like getting vibrated so it's guaranteed to hit the zone Mm. and i think that is the tagline wow the Sibian, guaranteed to get you there. And that's my pick for the goat. Amazing. Cool. I don't know how anything's going to beat that. Me neither. Well, I could, Who's give, I could give it a go. All yeah, right. go on, Vinny. So first of all, my one doesn't cost like £3,000. You, you, you don't need to get a mortgage <laughs> no, no, out no. for mine. It's a, it's a grand <laughs> and a half before you get the optional splash guard. <laughs> grand and a half. Like, that's not something for the people. That's something for like your... Uh, people but poshos and whatnot uh, yeah, posh my, my one's for the people right okay my one's for the people so in 1968 hitachi came out with a massage tool that used vibrations to help relieve tension and relax muscles the name of this item was the magic wand you might have heard of it Ooh. iconic but sex educator betty dobson 
envisioned this muscle relaxing tool as something more, something greater. Dobson would use the magic wand in educational classes to instruct women to its self-pleasure techniques. And one of these techniques was to put a small towel over the woman's vagina before using the wand as to dull the sensation and prolong the sexual experience. And this became known as the Betty Dobson technique or method. And one of Dobson's students, a woman by the name of Del Williams, was so inspired by the magic wand that she ended up founding the first ever feminist sex toy sex toy store in the US and this was in the early 70s and Williams stated the magic wand was her favorite sex toy due to its de- dependability and power at delivering pleasure pleasure to the clitoris it even became her best selling toy within a few years and Sorry, her best-selling toy, and within a few years, the Hitachi Magic Wand became one of the best-selling toys in the US full stop. Something that still carries true to this day. And I imagine probably the rest of the world, but the Wikipedia article Mm -hmm. only mentions America. Um, But it's not just a sex toy for women. It's also extremely popular with men. I've read countless of these, you know, not safe for work, ask Reddit threads. Um, where they mention like, oh, what's something that you didn't think would you'd be into until your girlfriend whipped it out kind of thing. And so many of them say the magic wand. So many of them say that it was the best orgasm they ever had in their life. And it's also won awards. It's won the number one greatest gadget of all time in 2005 by Mobile Magazine. It won best vibrator award from Piece of Cake. I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, and then in 2013, it won the favorite sex toy for women, uh, the Sex Awards, no less. Which I assume is, if it's called the Sex Awards, it must pretty be pretty. It, mu- it must be pretty prestigious. I didn't really. <laughs> t- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd expect it's it. The Sex the Awards. The Sex yeah. Awards. Favorite sex toy for women. Uh, and yeah, that's it. The magic wand. Buy one now. I mean, Booyah. it is iconic, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I do Every- have one, so it's my favourite. Is it actually? Yeah. Is it one of the ones that plugs into the wall? Yeah. Fucking hell, they look lethal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it does change your life, honestly. And you can use it anywhere. Like, I get a bad back, just... Yeah, that's because that's what it was. Mm. Going out. It was made for that yeah. originally, that's yeah. That's so funny. It's multi-purpose. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, it's like those. I, it's like an early version of those like muscle guns, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I do like occasionally. There, it's really weird, but the train from London to um, Exeter goes past the Hitachi factory, and every time I look at it, I'm like, nice. <laughs> they know what's going on. <laughs> they know what's happening. That's a big in orgy there. in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, but that's the thing. The thing with the Hitachi is, it's like truck. When you think about, they make all sorts of stuff. They make TVs, they make radios, whatever. They don't just make that. But that's the thing is, when you're looking for a sex toy, it's easy to think you should go to someone, a brand that makes sex toys. But Mm. actually, Hitachi make fucking power tools and like TVs, and they literally made the machines that I used to use in my precision engineering job that i hated yeah like if they can make an industrial lathe they can make something that's going to blow your fanny off yeah, yeah and that's, that's what they fair. did <laughs> oh it's tough that's all well th- vinnie's brought out a massive call there i tell you what before yeah. you make your decision you should hear my shout okay you better so this is this is a this is the best one trust me but there were three ones that I considered before this one. One of them was the magic wand. But I was like, nah. Nah. The other one was the rampant rabbit, which is, I think, it's the best-selling sex toy of all time. It's just the iconic one. It's got yeah. a dildo and, like, a thing that goes over the front. And it looks like a rabbit. I guess it looks... It's got, like, two I think it's the ears, prongs. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's the most famous one. That's the one that, like... Yeah, you know, that's the classic. But then I was like, nah, that's that's boring. So then I thought, oh, what 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 makes dildos more exciting? When you put them on a bike. Dildo bikes, they're interesting. You can have ones that are like front mounted and a 
like someone sits on the front and they as they paddle it like goes in and out you can have ones where like they go under the seat and then they as you pedal, it goes up and down. Last blast you know. to nine thousand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Isn't there one, one of those in um in that film Bruno? Yeah, probably. Yeah. There's like an <clears> exercise <throat> bike with a pole that's going. Yeah. Up his yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like whoop, whoop. it like does that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just think like who looked at bicycles and dildos and thought, brilliant. I know what to do. Strap that on there. Crank that round. Fantastic. I think a they're genius. ingenious. They are genius, but. They're not the GOAT. Oh, None you. of those are going to be the greatest sex toy of all time. In fact, the greatest sex toy of all time doesn't even require batteries. It can move in any direction and can stimulate any part of the body. Most people have one and probably a spare. It's easily the most portable sex toy ever. It's discreet. It can be used on yourself. It can be used on your partner. It can be used to f- stimulate both male parts and female parts. It comes with both rubbing and pulsating features. It can go inside stuff. It can go up your butt. It's hygienic. It's very easy to clean. It will never break. Hopefully not break. As a lifetime guarantee, if it does break, you can get it fixed. And the more you use it, the better you will be at using it. And, most importantly, according to 85% of men and half of females questioned by Love Honey in the UK, it is the best sex toy out there. (laughs) Of course, if you haven't already guessed, I'm talking about these hands. Yes, that's right, jaws dropped to the floor. What hands? It's obvious. And no, I wasn't talking about the rubber fist that someone does chase Bruno around when I meant hands. I did mean the actual hands that are attached to the ends of your arms. I've always it, just a quick pause. I've always wondered that because when you go on sex toy websites, there's always a big rubber fist, and you always think, "Haven't you already got one?" It's emulating this bad boy, the hand. The hands are they have been instrumental in human beings thriving on this planet. They can create anything everything that's ever been created on this planet has been created by these human hands including the first ever orgasms with these bad boys like i said you can stimulate your partner you can stimulate yourself it can a hand can replicate both a penis and a vagina at the same time if you want it to it can go in multiple orifices at the same time <laughs> the same if hand. you want it to it is the most diverse easy to use sex toy of all time and i guarantee i 1000 percent guarantee everybody's first ever experience with sex toys their first ever sex toy and they're all reliable is their motherfucking hand i rest my case hands are the greatest sex toys of all time easy how's it a toy i don't it yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's, it counts. It's, uh, well, well, according to eighty-five percent of men and half of women, when questioned by Love Honey in our very great Brilliant. nation, the United Kingdom, they said it was the greatest sex toy of all time. I think it can be a sex toy. It goes in. It goes in. It can go I round. It can go up toy, and down. Yeah. Why? And you could just say like cocks then. Yeah. yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Right, convincing argument now. Oh, nah. I'll be honest, what? Michael, you're out. Damn. You know I'm kind out. of disappointed, not in you, Michael, although I am disappointed in you. <laughs> what? I'm disappointed none of us picked those. Because in my. So I used to live with nine girls. So this is my. This is how I know about this. But during lockdown, at least to my knowledge, there was a revolution. This new thing came out called the clit sucker or something like that. And apparently that, well, I say apparently, I know f- for a fact <laughs> that thing fucking blows minds. Mm. However, again, I don't know if I'm going to keep this in, but just personally, don't do much for, for men, at least in my experience. Tried using it and it just kind of made like a weird, slightly farty noise. <laughs> Didn't really do a lot. Just created like a, a weird suction 
Like didn't... one of them little like fish that like licks the inside of glasses, just putting one of them on the end. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Just wouldn't you have much? Ra- wouldn't you have much rather use your hands, Seb? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I probably did. But... I thought hands. I thought hands were a great shout, but apparently I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think you were. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a. I've. Just, I'm obsessed by this horsey riding dildo thing. The Sibian. I, I do think it's fabulous. I don't want to say great. I don't think it's that great. I don't think anything compares to a magic wand. Does that mean I oh, win? Oh, V-Dog. I think, yeah. Yes, yeah. my first win of the season. Yes. yes. The Thank Hitachi you, magic Thank wand. You. Like, <laughs> like everyone, it's bought you pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure, yeah. <laughs> yes. Damn. Thank I do that. think Thank it's you. the price point that that puts the Sibian Sibian out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a luxury Although maybe item. Amy, you could put it on your Amazon wish list, and then some guy mm. could get a kick out of spending a grand and a half, and then the extra hundred on the optional splash guard. <laughs> yeah. Or we could start like a GoFundMe or something. A GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah. Right. Link in the description. GoFundMe. Goat fund get me. Amy a Sibian. Get Amy we'll an pull, orgasm. Get Amy her first ever. <laughs> her first ever. <laughs> her first oh, first ever. <laughs> oh, oh, God. No. It is sad. Sorry to bring this back to earth, but it's sad. Have you ever read how many people have never had an orgasm? Specifically women. Really? It's sometimes, some estimates are like 40%. What? Yeah. 40. That's not great. That's Guys, what are you doing? Not All really. girls, sort yourselves out. So Come literally on. sort yourselves out. Buy a magic yeah. wand. Oh yeah, you could sort yourself out, but that's no one will, you know. Um, anyway, can I go right. for a piss before we do sex scene really quick? Oh, go for it. Go for it. Oh, I'll be really quick. We all know it's having a wank. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, mate, this was Vinny. What a what a, what a pull out of nowhere. Well, the magic wand. Yeah, but. Back on the back on the winning streak. You know what? Actually, after read, because I remember reading these like Reddit threads, being like guys being like, it's actually really good on guys too. And I was like, my buy one. But then I looked aside. Like, it, it was like a hundred quid, and I was like, ah. You can get them cheaper, to be fair. Yeah. What well, second hand? No. Well, no. You can get like. <laughs> si- I, that's the thing. Second hand sex toys. I'm not sure about. A bit rogue. <laughs> A lot Is of it... wasted plastic as well. Yeah, that's mm. true. No one wants some second hand. Yeah. Mm. So for we life, need... really, isn't it? We need like wooden ones. Take it back to like <laughs> eco toys. We don't want to like disintegrate while it, you're using it. Would, like, it would like warp, wouldn't it, over time? You get like what's what's it called when you get like sticks in your oh, splinters? splinters. <laughs> splinters. Wait, oh god, no, you don't want that. Oh Jesus! Oh, fuck me. No, but you can you can get like, but then also here's the thing I don't know. So, full transparency, we got one, but it was like a cheap Amazon one, and I don't think it's as good as the ones that plug into the mains because it it's fine, but it's not blowing your head off. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a bit weak. Yeah, you got to get like a plug-in one. Yeah. I remember yeah. I got mine, like five years ago or something and like a month after i just i bought all my friends one every really? birthday came up i was like sorry you're getting one of these everyone's what getting a one gift. wow what a gift so good spreading the love and they all love them that's balling though isn't it that's quite a baller move to be like hey guys i make so much money off my sexy fucking only fans i'm actually gonna buy you all sex toys so fucking happy yeah. birthday mate <laughs> I can't do it now. I can't afford it now. We're in a recession. I know. Cost of living, man. You can have my used ones. Yeah. I said this the other day. Sorry, this is so non-sexy, but I'm so bored of reading articles that are like, hey, here's a way to save money. Just stop doing all the things you like. Just (laughs) just, just actually squeeze every last piece of joy out of your life until yeah. you're just existing just eat the blandest cheapest food go to work don't spend any money on travel walk to your job 
eat fucking rice yeah. and beans for it, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and don't do anything. It might as well just be like, just kill yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just die, <laughs> that is just, just modern Britain, though, isn't it? It's all these like fifty-five-year-old conservatives who are like, "Well, we didn't have Netflix when I was younger, you know." It back, you know, and they're like, "The reason we're in this recession is kids buying fucking Netflix." It's like, no, it's like, no, it's not. No, Stop it's not. Pulling. Like, I just want to watch The Mandalorian. Leave me alone. I don't have <laughs> yeah. anything else in my fucking yeah. life. I can yeah, you lot food. fucked it up so bad. I need to watch Netflix. Like, I'll never buy a house. Oh, no. I'll probably never fucking even think about it. Leave me alone. Yeah. I just want to watch The Last Airbender. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. Let me have an avatar. I just want a symbiote. Exactly. I just want a, I, I just want the optional splash guard. <laughs> 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 oh, anyway, oh, right. Next Mork. up. Who's Mork judging it's, sexy? It's Mork. Mork, after you. Right. So, also, Vinny, make sure you're timing Seb very religiously, because I feel like he... Took the royal piss. Oh, mate, he took the Sibian. piss. It's he like took a the piss that time. Thirty minutes right. fucking talk. Anyway, <laughs> we've all been there. You're young. You're watching a movie with your parents, when all of a sudden the two main characters are doing it. God damn, is it awkward? You don't know where to look. You c- you can look away or make a big. Sorry, I've written the wrong thing. <laughs> you can't look away or make a big deal, or they'll something like say something like, "It's only sex. We all do it." Don't want that. You can't That's stare. The worst thing you can ever know is that your parents well, have had sex. You can't stare in case they see you enjoying it. However, <laughs> as adults, we don't have that problem anymore. We can enjoy whatever we want, and so right now. Let's just stare. Let's analyse those sex scenes and find out for whatever reason it might be. Good technique, good music, or just funny. Which one's the goat? For me personally, it's the two sex scenes in Step Brothers where the woman says she's going to roll herself, roll the guy up into a little ball and put him in his, her vagina and every time he moves she'll just feel him in there. And then she proceeds to have sex with him in the toilet and he says, It's all slippery. <laughs> I, th- I think that's the greatest. I've always wanted to just crack out that line to like just just to like a girl like probably on the first time and just like look horrified and be like oh it's all slippery but I've never had the guts to do it. It would be funny though. Um, it would be hilarious. But anyway, which one is the greatest sex scene of all time? Vinny's got his hands up. He wants to go first. Go on then, Vinny. So... Vinny's got his sex toy up. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> So, also, um, multiple attachments. So for my sex scene, <laughs> uh, Mork, I think you, you, you'll, you'll know exactly what I mean after I, I can <laughs> summarise it in like one second. Okay. So the gist of it is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> no, you haven't. So, on... <laughs> January no. January 11th 2017 Twitter user uh, at Janjo1874 made internet history <laughs> when he uploaded an 8 second video onto Twitter and in that 8 second video it's presumably him if you haven't seen this video it's, pres- it's presumably him and uh, presumably his, his wife or girlfriend or some prostitute or something and she's she's given him a blowjob and he opens the video with let's hope arsenal win today three points <laughs> <laughs> i can't even describe that laughing you can't even say it <laughs> oh, God. To, to which to which she stops sucking his dick looks up and goes are you fucking joking in the <laughs> very uh <laughs> Cockney accent. <laughs> he then proceeds to do the wheeziest laugh I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and the cherry on top. <laughs> no, but no, but before that, she starts sucking again, doesn't she? Yeah, she goes back to sucking. She goes back to sucking. He's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just farts. <laughs> and she, she, like, pops the cock out. Like, it was, like, literally the most perfect, like, timing ever. We're like, Fart, and then immediately she like popped the cock out of her mouth, and you just hear, 
like <laughs> a really satisfying pop sound and the video just ends oh, immediately <laughs> you've got to send Amy the link I really want to see this you've got to put it on the group chat oh my just god yeah chat. okay yeah, <coughs> Vinny it. upload it to the thing that's just you can I'm see it I'm gonna die I can't believe you've oh done this oh my god <laughs> I can't believe you've done this Vinny oh, okay no. wait. Um, <laughs> oh yeah put it in the group chat oh god if let's all watch have, it if we all just, if we all just <laughs> want to watch it together <laughs> I can't believe it's still up as well. I'm going to have phones. Are you joking? It's like the Arsenal win. Amy, you have to have the sound. If it doesn't have the sound, it's not going to do it. Twitter's telling me I need to change my pride, but my. Oh no, there it is. She's up. Oh, phew. Are you <laughs> <laughs> I could just hear the fart through the, through the speakers. How has that been on Twitter for six years? <laughs> it's the greatest oh, video of all time. <laughs> Thank you, oh, thank oh you. God. So you're already, you're already awarding it. Thank you, Mark. Oh God. <laughs> but I just I just want to say, like, the, <laughs> first of all, the gall, the fucking balls on this man. <laughs> he's getting he's getting a, a lovely blowjob from his uh, presumably girlfriend or whatever. You know, she's like, oh, I'm gonna make my man feel good. Maybe it's his birthday or something. <laughs> he's getting a blowjob. He just whips out his phone, starts talking about the football. <laughs> of course, the, her only reaction is the only like. <laughs> real reaction to that is like are you joking like what the <laughs> fuck are you doing goes back to sucking his cock <laughs> laughs. just fucking farts <laughs> oh, just the timing God. of the <laughs> it's just perfect it's like musically perfect it's like there's like a there's like a beat as well it goes like it goes like are you joking <laughs> Dun, dun. <laughs> like it's like it's so like eyes oh, you couldn't orchestrate it better but yeah oh, that's oh. that's my pick for the greatest oh, you... sex scene of all time <laughs> <laughs> you fucking not fuck it hell it's either gonna be oh. that or the sex scene from um team america if you've ever seen that film <laughs> yeah because that one's really funny because it's like it's like it's a really like gratuitous sex scene but because mm. they're like Barbie dolls and they don't actually have any like parts, like they don't have a penis or a vagina, yeah. they can get away with them doing all these like crazy positions and like really going at it. But like it's still yeah. like a 15 because there's it's nothing so actually happening. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Wow. I never thought that that particular video would have a place on goats. But, <laughs> but the funny I am, thing is, I'm the, so thankful that it does. I'm so the, thankful that we got to talk about that. The funny thing is, if you go back and listen to one of these episodes, there's a bit where I say, "Are you joking?" And in the edit, I put that, <laughs> and it's the one from Twitter. It's the actual, like that's a kick going, which is on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real it niche inside joke so listeners oh. go back and listen I think it was in the one where you were talking about um, King Arthur or whatever isn't it oh yeah I think it was it's the oh, King yeah. Arthur one alternative history so listeners go back and listen out for the pop if you hear it's yeah. a dick <clears throat> wow um, crikey God, wow Vinny. who who wants to go next <laughs> I'll go next because Vinny actually set me up sorry Amy to jump in front of you but I Vinny couldn't set not you up. do this oh, no. because he set me up because he said about Team America. Now, we're all professionals here and I can imagine all our heads went to the same few places. The goat sex scene, it either needs to be groundbreaking, like it needs to be like the first ever one or something like that. Mm. It needs to be super hot, like it needs to be really fucking hot or it needs to be absolutely outrageous. Now, I thought about doing the first one the groundbreaking one, but a lot of the original sex scenes and original porn films, mm, mm, not right. great, not great. So we just like the history and the vibes. I don't know. So I just <laughs> didn't do that. So instead, I went from the last one, which is absolutely outrageous. So the sex scene I've chosen 
is from the 2004 live action animation Team America World Police. Oh, you've actually gone for what I was going to go for. <laughs> I've actually gone what for the what fuck? you were going to go for. <laughs> That's insane. So if you don't know or have never seen Team America, it was made by Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the guys who did South Park. And it's pretty much exactly what you would imagine if those two guys made a live action animation. It pokes fun at celebrities, politicians and entire nations on every side of the political spectrum. No one is safe. And it kind of serves as both a parody for America's self-centered worldview, but also the self-centered nature of celebrities itself. Now, amongst this is some pretty colorful material, which I'm not sure would make it into a blockbuster movie today, including A, a puppet doing blackface, which I don't know where that goes on the spectrum of OK, oh, yeah. but it happened. And also one of the most outrageously graphic sex scenes in cinema <laughs> history. Now, obviously, if we're talking animated sex, we can go a lot further than two puppets. This isn't hentai we're talking about. But for something which has had a theatrical cinema release, it is the most graphic Thunderbird sex you've ever seen in your fucking <laughs> life. Now, the scene starts on Mount Rushmore when Gary confesses to Lisa that as a child, his acting skills got his brother killed by gorillas. <laughs> and the you two get emotionally closer. <laughs> yeah. They then admit that they have feelings for one another, but Lisa says she will never love again because she can't take the pain of losing someone. Because her previous partner, as is seen in the film, was shot while he was in the act of proposing to her. Mm. She then declares that she would never be with Gary unless he promises not to die. <laughs> Which Gary says, of course, you know I can't promise that. Lisa then says that if Gary did promise he would never die, she would make love to him right there on top of Mount Rushmore. And Gary immediately promises that he will never die. <laughs> he changes his tune very quickly. <laughs> Suddenly, the two are naked and in a hotel room. And the scene starts pretty PG. It's kind of the classic like innuendo sex scene. There's some feet rubbing, some maybe sexy ab shots. But there's nothing specifically <clears throat> outright sex. However, it quickly descends into Gary bending Lisa over a chair her riding him in reverse cowgirl and then and then and then them aggressively 69 each 69 ing each other on the floor <laughs> and just to clarify these are like puppets as in thunderbirds like mm. it's like watching the thunderbirds 69 each other <laughs> and to be honest, to be honest with you it's kind of hard to wrap your head around unless you've seen it also one of the thunderbirds has huge tits that's also <laughs> a very key part of the scene now, why do I think it's the goat? Well, A, because it's fucking outrageous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You couldn't do that anymore. But B, because I've actually never watched Team America in full. And yet I have seen this sex scene so many times. Mm. I remember it being Bluetoothed around at school. I remember people playing it on the projector at school. And it still pops up on Reddit now it's like have you seen this fucking crazy thing it was a staple part of my early teens in the same way as two girls one cup and crank that by soldier boy it is ingrained in my memory and that is why it's the goat wow so so far in goat sex scene we've had and t two puppets going at it. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. That is exactly the way it should be. Um, yeah, I like the Team America sex scene as well. It's pretty funny. It's mm. pretty good. It's. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it should be replicated. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure you should watch that and go, that looks interesting, let's try it. Oh, um, no. <clears throat> but... It, it, they do some groundbreaking, interesting moves in that section, oh, which also goes on for ridiculous. ages. It's like five minutes. Oh, yeah. it's, it's pretty crazy. It goes <laughs> on for fucking where, ages. Where she's on her head, like she's <clears throat> doing like a break dancing spin on her head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She like goes at it from the top. It, it's <laughs> yeah. <insane. laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like the Karma Sutra that you should never attempt. <laughs> 
She's like at one point, yeah, it's mad. It's mad. It is mad. But right, Amy, you've got to bring us home um, and follow up. Like okay. I said, yeah, it's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> it is interesting the different what people have gone for um, <laughs> I'm going to take like a different <laughs> yeah I thought you might. so in the early 90s yeah in the early 90s a movie with one of the most iconic scenes in history was released the most romantic passion filled sex scene to ever screens this supernatural romance like most great ideas, actually came from an LSD trip and ended up grossing more than half a billion dollars worldwide, more than Die Hard 2, Die Harder, and Total Recall, and even made 50 million more than Pretty Woman. Um, I hope that no one is listening to this in public out loud because what I'm about to describe to you is the most central, juiciest fuck ever. Be ready to take your panties off, ladies, because you're in for a treat. Um, okay. Hmm. A woman sits alone in the middle of the night at her pottery wheel. An old vintage jukebox starts playing Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers. Imagine that that is playing while I'm talking. Never heard a of A man it. with beautiful golden hair. You'll, you'll know it once you... You've yeah. never heard Unchained Melody? I've never. Either. I don't listen to that stuff. You have. <laughs> Let me butcher it for you. It's the one that goes like, "Oh, my love." Oh yeah. My darling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Her, her, her. That one. Right. <laughs> Imagine it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a man with beautiful golden hair and a bronze body comes in topless and sits behind her. He reaches out to the clay, ruining her carefully molded pot. They giggle. And it's clear to see that that's not the only thing tonight. But alas, <laughs> their hands intertwine, come one, and they get to work making a new pot. They immerse their hands into the wet, glossy clay and build a strong phallic mountain. <laughs> All four hands work up and down its shaft like a loving hand orgy, <clears throat> building it taller and stronger with every pump. The tanned god starts to massage the woman's hands while she focuses on her pottery magic. Then he softly lands a kiss on the back of her neck. This is it. The pot is abandoned as passion takes over and suddenly they're in the bedroom. He picks her up and gently car- they gently caress each other as if they were their own pots being massaged into works of art. And then they fuck. That is the scene. Um, nice. So, Sweet. Yeah. This ghostly romance is about pottery artist Molly and her boyfriend, a banker who actually dies a bit later in the film. Um, I and, thought he was already dead in that bit. Well, I was hoping that. And then I did some research because I was like, yes, it's like sex with a ghost. It's going to be great. And then I Googled it and it, it's not. It's I always, because I've never seen yeah. the film, I always thought he was a ghost. Same. Well, what, the, what film is it? Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's what I you can't have sex with a ghost. It would be... hmm. We could. I think you can. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. What makes this sex so great is recognizable and classic it is. This sex scene is so iconic that there have been literally countless spoofs and parodies of it. Um, the Naked Gun, which mm. was actually made by like the same producer, movie studios, they their trailer for that is a, a parody of it. Um, Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart parodied it in their advert for their like little stoned baking show. Mm. Ella Generous, Kate and Richard from Good Morning Britain. It was spoofed no on Community, where Jeff Wing gets thrown out of a pottery, gr- pottery class because he recreated it. Two and a Half Men spoofed it. Family Guy has spoofed it at least twice. Wallace and Gromit, A Matter of Loaf and Death. Like, it just goes on and on. It's mm. everyone in it. So, uh, it's great. Yeah, I guarantee I've seen the... I know this is... I've, even I've never seen that movie or even heard of it. 
I know that scene because I reckon yeah. I've seen it in in so many like different platforms over and over and over again. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Hmm. This is tricky. Seb, fortunately you're out. Straight away. (laughs) 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 Because um, there's actually no sex happens in that sex scene. Because oh. technically they're puppets, and that's not really. <laughs> no <laughs> sex happens in ghosts, does it? You fucking tit. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. Unless it's actual porn. No sex happens in a sex scene. Yeah, but they are so real people. <laughs> um. So Seb's out. So now I need to decide between. <laughs> <laughs> And a real glorified <laughs> sex scene, which has been parodied, parodied countless times. In mm. true goats fashion, this has come down to probably, without doubt, the greatest sex scene of all time. One of the most iconic movie <laughs> moments in history, and someone farting with a cock in their mouth. <laughs> oh, and it's a genuinely oh, difficult choice. It is really hard, <laughs> honestly, because that video. That Twitter video is one of my absolute favourite things in the world. It it never fails to cheer me up. If I watch that, I'm instantly happy. I show oh, it no, to 100%. everybody I meet. It's so great. In the uh, in the in the <clears throat> in the unlikely event that I was ever like on a bridge about to bend myself, mm. the thing to do to bring me back would be to show me that video, and I mean yeah. that in sincerity. It brings joy to my heart, even in the lowest moments. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. Honestly, it does. And I they should put it on the Samaritans boards just to. Get the <laughs> <out of> that, <laughs> yeah. They would save countless lives. Um. So I think Vinny, I think you've won my heart oh, with that but. video because I love it so much. But. but I, I just I don't think I can crown. That that video as a goat sex scene. It's a scene. There's sex as happening. A, I'm not sure it was set up to be a scene. Like you said, the absolute audacity of the fella May farting I, I, <laughs> farting in his girlfriend's mouth <laughs> while his, while his cock pops out like a lollipop. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is, once you whip out your phone, it's a, it's immediately a sex scene. No matter okay. no matter what's going on. <laughs> Um, Your Honor, uh, but you you you've won my heart with that. I'm so glad that you brought that up because it is my favorite video of all time. But I would have to give the pottery scene from Ghost as the actual goat sex scene of all play. time because it probably is just the goat. If it's been parodied that many times, it's got to be it's got to be great. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't think of another sex scene that's been parodied. Um, no, can't do it. No, just, I've is, just, yeah. I've just racked my brain through the entire history of everything. I haven't got a single one, so the pottery one and the fact that they're making like a giant phallus as well is pretty funny. Also, by the way, this means I'm undefeated. Oh yeah, like I've, <laughs> I've never. Jesus Christ! So, all our guests, well, all our guests now are undefeated because Saru won the last one as well. I know it's like it's yeah. almost like the guests that we get on know more about the given subject than we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Is yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is it exactly. So well done. <laughs> Amy's fucking three-time champion. Yeah, you're undefeated. You're the like belt. the Khabib of fucking goats. Well, Seb, if you didn't bring along Team America, <laughs> <laughs> Vinny almost picked that was, it. I, that was my choice at first. Yeah, um, but he wouldn't um, have as my... soon as he realised is is the error of his ways. My my other choice was uh, shout out to my brother. My brother showed me this the other day when I asked him what do you think would be the goat sex scene, and uh, he whipped out this this video. Um, I think it's called like Katie does anal first time. I think it's on Pornhub <laughs> or something. It's like this amateur porn video where it's just a guy POV like holding his camera or whatever, and it's just some like girl, and they're both from the north as well. They got like these northern <laughs> accents, and everything the guy says is absolutely fucking unintentionally so hilarious. Like the whole time he's just like. <laughs> 
She's <laughs> like, I'm going to put it in your chocolate bun bun factory. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah? <laughs> and he keeps referring to her arsehole as a shitter, and it's really weird. <laughs> yeah, put it in your shitter. It like, actually sounds exactly like that. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. Man. Wow. Oh, God. Maybe we should do a goat grab bag Vinny's favourite videos. <laughs> oh, God. Blimey. Well, <clears throat> um, well, that's it. I'll wrap us up. We are, we are done. Goats, this is the fourth grab bag, I think. Yeah. But the first ever sexy grab bag. It's our second guest within a couple of weeks. And it's the second time that we've had the now world-famous Amy on our podcast. Undefeated as well. So next time she comes back on, we've got to do... We've got to... Guys, come on, seriously. We need to, like, actually... Stuff the ballots. Yeah. yeah. Cheat. Come on. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just cheat. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just, we'll just fine. Um, reason not to Amy. It's fine. <laughs> um. But if you enjoyed the podcast, um, follow us on Instagram, Go and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a cheeky review, please, because it really, really helps. And if you really, really love us, then go and check out our Patreon for some exclusive stuff on there. And if you can, donate some money, make a pledge on there, um, because that will really, really help us. Also, go and check out Amy's social media, which we will link in the description of this video audio format however you're listening or watching this on youtube amy have you anything else to say do you want to say anything to close the show off um it's been a pleasure in all thank the you <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> awesome well also, that's we'll, we'll it. do it we'll do a go fund me down down in the down in the description for the sibian as well okay oh, yeah. first over all guys and also <laughs> genuinely <laughs> This sounds the most ridiculous thing I'll ever say, but if you watch this on YouTube and you think, Amy seems lovely, I'd love to see her tits, <laughs> you can do that. That's in the description. You can 100% do that. So, yeah. what a world. All of the holes. <laughs> All of them, but not at the same time. Every we established hole. that. Yeah. It's too difficult. Don't go asking for something yeah. stupid. There's no way possible. you can get the ears and the arse in the same shot. It's not. It's never it's been just, done. You can't do it. <laughs> Maybe, though, if you, you know how, like, be real, you get the... Anyway, no. Um, <laughs> you, there's, like, the brief pause. You could maybe go... Hur, hur, and, like, get both. I don't know. You'd still struggle. But there we have it. Goat sexy grab bag. Done. I'm sure we're going to do another one. We'll definitely, definitely have Amy back on the show um, next time that we are all feeling sexy. Um, but other than that, nothing else from me. I'm all done. Seb, Vinny, happy days. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Amy. Wonderful. Every time we do this with Amy, I just think, should we just send Amy a microphone and get her on full time? Because she's quite good at this. <laughs> Stop. I was literally going to ask you when you get your microphones because... I want to do like weird, sexy ASMR and stuff anyway. So I feel like that would be like. We can 100% help yeah. you with that. Perfect. Um, in yeah. fact, we'll Michael, mm. Michael, Davey, if we get round to fixing the microphone that I stole from work, we'll cut that out. <laughs> then we've got a spare microphone. We can yeah, that's true. Yeah, I will. I will get around to fixing it. It's on my list, my massive list of things to fix. Including your life. Exactly. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> well, that's us done. So, see you next week where we are going to be doing something else. Love you, bye. Love, Love you, you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.